Well, here in D.C., the massive Keystone XL pipeline protests have died down in recent months. But that doesn't mean the battle over the Keystone pipeline has died down in general. In fact, the pipeline has become a major focal point on Capitol Hill, where the Senate voted on a new measure designed to keep President Obama out of the decision-making process. Now, their idea was to cut him out of the equation because the pipeline originates in Canada and not in the U.S. But the measure needed 60 votes to pass, and it quite literally sprung Obama into action. He and his team lobbied other Democratic lawmakers into saying no to this bill. Now, reports are that Obama even made phone calls himself. So as you can imagine, the GOP was none too happy about that. There's a report this morning that the president is personally making phone calls to Democratic senators he thinks might vote for the amendment, asking them not to. And frankly, it's hard to even comprehend how out of touch, how completely out of touch he is on this issue. Now, those words were simply not convincing enough because the measure failed today. 56 to 42, with 11 Democrats voting in favor of the measure. Now, when Mitch McConnell says that the president is out of touch, he's referring to all the job opportunities that supporters say could come from the construction of the pipeline. Even former President Bill Clinton has shown support for the pipeline's capabilities. And speaking of jobs, this has become a divisive issue for the labor unions. See, on one hand, some labor unions are in favor of projects of the project's potential for job creation, touted in ads like this one. The construction of the pipeline will produce over 340,000 American jobs over the next four years in a $7 billion project funded entirely by private industry to produce something America really needs, a reliable, stable source of energy produced in North America. Now, according to union websites, it turns out that more union members are actually opposed to the pipeline than those that are in favor of it. Check out this chart. While 3.3 million union members favor Keystone, 4.9 million have come out against it. And those union members who side with Obama say the president has done the right thing, putting the environment first. And they believe that Keystone won't be the answer for the growing gas problem. Prices have risen even higher. Today's national average, 365. President Obama says his Republican rivals are using the pain at the pump to score political points. Gas prices are up another three and a half cents just from yesterday, 27 cents from a month ago. Now, some say the Keystone Pipeline could cause a spike in gas for the Midwest region. And Bloomberg says that residents could see the price go up at least 20 cents a gallon. CommonDreams.org notes that some of the oil supply will end up in foreign markets because oil producers are working side by side with Texas refineries to move the product to the global market, shipping the black gold to Europe, Latin America, and China. But oil aside, a lot of landowners still have concerns about how TransCanada's project is going to affect their property. The NRDC spoke with residents in Texas that have doubts if the benefits of the project might actually outweigh the costs. 1.7 million gallons can leak daily without triggering a real-time leak detection system. And at TransCanada's request, they will not add any additional ground patrols to look for those undetectable leaks. I mean, that's a huge problem. You know, that much could be spilling daily into our water supplies, into our creeks, into our springs. If I believe that this would actually lower the price of gasoline and diesel fuel here in the states, I wouldn't be so... Uh, unhappy about it. Now, while the Texas landowners took their concerns straight to the politicians in D.C., Native Americans in South Dakota took a different approach. When several members of the Oglala Lakota tribe got word that TransCanada trucks were trying to bring supplies to parts of the pipeline's route last Monday, about 75 members decided to put their foot down, quite literally. Semi trucks loaded with enormous oil pipeline components were set to cross Oglala territory sometime during the afternoon on March 5th. A call went out via digital media. Participants were mobilized near Wombly, South Dakota, and for an impromptu gathering, blocked the road with their bodies to prevent semi trucks and pipeline components from crossing. Now, at least five people were arrested when police were called in to break up that barrier. Like the people in Texas, the Oglala Lakota tribe believes that the route for the XL pipeline will contaminate their water supply and will poison their people, all for the sake of making a profit. 
Now, keeping all of that in mind, TransCanada, the company behind the pipeline construction, plans to refile its application to build the northern section of the oil line within the next few months. And protests are still budding in the Midwest, especially in parts of Texas and South Dakota, where residents want to make sure that it's known that they stand with Obama and oppose the pipeline. So while one measure surrounding the Keystone failed in the Senate today, something tells me that the battle for the pipeline is long from over.